Hi guys, this is Matt Hamilton with US Lacrosse Magazine. We're here with Tari Kandamiri, aka Official Lax Girl. You guys probably know her, and she is here with a fun top five today. She's going to be breaking down her top five social media follows in the game. So this should be pretty fun from a social media expert herself. Um, without further ado, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna jump into the top five with Tari here. So the first one on Tari's list is at the Drama Queener. So I'm going to leave it to you to explain why you like the Drama Queener, and we'll, we'll go down the list that way. So we'll start with the Drama Queener. Why is she one of your top five social media followers? So um, shout out to Sylvia. I'm sure she'll watch this, and I hope it brings a big smile to her face. I feel like every tweet of hers, especially during the um, – I think she really started tweeting, or we started tracking during the PLL championship series, and she's just so funny. I feel like uses, you know, gifts as much as I do, and just, like, loves lacrosse, so knowledgeable about, about the game, and finds really good ways to, like, kind of merge her personality with insights about the game, and, um, you know, coming from a family that's really stored in the game, the Queen Our Family, um, both on the men's and women's side, is, has had a big impact on the game of lacrosse. So it's always fun to see her tweets and just interact with her. And I think, yeah, she just brings lots of fun and personality to the timeline. So I, I love following her. Yeah, and just break it down to, to anyone who might not be familiar with the Queen Our Family. You know, talk about Sylvia, you know, a little background on her and just kind of the importance of that family in lacrosse. Yeah, for sure. Um, so. I'm probably gonna butcher all the school names, so I'm not gonna say <laughs> all the school names, but um, so yeah, so Sylvia is obviously who I just mentioned, and she also coaches now. And then her brothers, uh, who you may recognize, Brett and Bryce Queener also. And funny enough, um, Bryce, Bryce was actually a coach at Rhodes, I believe, and I went to Suwannee, and Rhodes was our rival. So it's just funny that during that time, I was like, no, like we can't support Rhodes. Like, that's our enemy, like that's our, you know, our rival. And then now it's like, oh, okay, that's a coach that I really respect and he's at Fresno now and supporting and cheering them on. So yeah, just, you know, they're kind of all over the map and, and have made a big impact in the game. Mm -hmm. Awesome, give the drama queener a follow guys. And moving to the next one, this one, I think we, we all know and we've seen, uh, you know, now on TLN, Diggs Tape, mm -hmm. shout out to Diggs Tape, uh, made the top five social media followers from official Axe Girls. So. Um, yeah, if you can, for anyone who doesn't know Diggs Tape, just kind of cue up who Diggs Tape is and, and why you love his profile. Yeah, so I actually just found out his name is Mikey Diggs. I did not know that. I just would refer to him as Diggs Tape, so shout out to you. Um, but yeah, I think he, you know, what I love about all the people on the list, they're great for various reasons, but I think just finding ways to infuse their personality and their passion for the game with how they present content. So every video that he posts, you know, he'll be narrating a play and like have really funny little phrases about things or, you know, rewind a play and, and just kind of walk everyone through how it's happening, add some laughs in there. Just, yeah, it just makes it really fun to like watch tape and watch lacrosse content. And I think everyone's embraced that. Um, we're finding you know, how fun it is and how enjoyable it is to hear about the game from different people's perspectives. And then now him being on TLN and they're doing those weekly videos as well. I think it's just, yeah, he's an awesome representative and, um, you know, steward of the game and, and finds a great way to present lacrosse content in a really engaging way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's a guy that like the lacrosse community kind of got introduced to through Twitter and, you know, it, it just kind of took off. We, you know, people love the video. So when you first saw Dig State, his Twitter, or, you know, Instagram, what was your first reaction there? Yeah, I think I actually saw his Instagram first, and I was like, who is this person, and why are they so funny? Like, it was just, you could tell that it was, like, effortless. You know, it was just, things were coming to his mind and his head as he was watching these plays, and yeah, it'd be awesome to see him, you know, announce, or like, not narrate, but just, yeah, announce, uh, I, you know, all-star game or something, because I think that just brings so much flavor. So in my mind, immediately, I was like, this would be hilarious at an all-star game, or you know, some kind of game that we want to have, like, pizzazz at, so. Diggs Tape hosting the PLL All-Star game. You heard it here first. first. <laughs> you never know. Could happen. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll move to the, the next one on your list here, which is at Lax Girl Lex, um, and she's another good follow in the lacrosse community. So uh, break it down for us, Lax Girl Lex. Yeah, so as a child of social media, I'm sure my parents would watch this and be like, told you stay on the internet um but so many of us have met good friends on the internet and alex is one of my best friends and we met gosh like what seven ish eight years ago whenever i started um my twitter account just kind of talking about the game and how much we loved it and then 
hung out at the national championship. And when I came to Atlanta as an intern was like the first time we really, really hung out. And um, she's just like a sister basically. So, um, you know, going from just tweeting back and forth about lacrosse to each other to now, you know, being someone that I rely on and talk to every single day and just like is a big part of my life, had to shout her out. But yeah, she, I mean, has had, I think three ACL surgeries and like always is so positive about everything, you know, worked really hard, did all her rehab to stay playing, played at Reinhardt. Um, and yeah, it's just someone that I really admire and I adore. So I had to put on the list. So <laughs> shout out to the bestie. Yeah. And, and she does, you know, kind of, kind of like you, you see her personality in, in her profile. And so kind of walk, walk us through, you know, what, what someone would expect to see on her profile. Yeah. So you'd probably see some really funny takes about, yeah, I guess just all anything happening in the game, kind of the the same. I think sometimes she's more nuanced than me, like pinpointing specific plays where I'm just like random gif and random letters of me yelling. Um, and football, like she knows so much about football beyond my knowledge of football. Um, knows a ton, really loves that game. So yeah, I think just really great nuanced sports takes about different plays, different games, players, stats, um, different things that are happening. And she also loves like, different games xbox ps fives and things like that so also some gamer tweets in there um yeah just a combination of all the cool stuff yeah so you can expect a variety from lax girl lex so yeah, exactly give her a follow guys moving to the next one um so our friends at kenya lacrosse you know we've seen them tweeting a couple times over the past couple of years with some some viral videos but um yeah walk us through you know kind of when you got introduced to kenya lacrosse and, and why you enjoyed their profile yeah, so I originally was introduced to Ken Lacrosse. I think I had heard about them, but maybe came upon them a couple of years ago and then met the founder of Ken Lacrosse, um, Storm Crentham, and she's just amazing. You know, she is consistently going to Kenya, providing, you know, clinics, um, fundraising, giving materials. And what I really love, you know, beyond what's going on on the field is how she's connected with the community and the players um, and, and that coaching staff in general really, like, ensures the health and well-being and safety of their players you can really tell how passionate they are they want their players to be able to travel and experience you know maybe things that they may not have the opportunity to experience in everyday life um you know some of the players maybe come from backgrounds where they're in rural areas or maybe in areas that aren't as advanced as other part you know parts of kenya that are in the city or um you know families in kenya that maybe have more resources and i think lacrosse has kind of found its way of being a really good step up to provide opportunities for the players to go to school, to learn a new skill, to meet people, to, you know, practice English language, anything that they maybe traditionally wouldn't get. So yeah, I just, I, there's so much love and I just feel the love for the players on and off the field. And it's just, yeah, it's great. And as an African, you know, I was born in Zimbabwe. So anytime I see fellow African nations playing lacrosse and um, it making such a positive impact and, and leveling the playing field for the kids born in the city and the kids born in, you know, um, maybe some more rural or periphery areas, it's, it's always a positive to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a way of connecting the, the world with lacrosse. You know, you see, you see things going on in Kenya and, and it's really fun to see that interaction, especially at world championships. So mm -hmm. Kenya lacrosse has been great account. So that's your, your fourth one, and we'll move to, to the fifth one here, um, which is a fellow reporter, Amari Pollard. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get your shout-out going for Amari Pollard. What do we need to know about her profile? Amari, what do you need to – actually, let me read off her, um, her bio because, listen, i got to hype up my sisters. So she went to UNC, to the Hussman School of Journalism and Media. So you know she's good. You know she's, a good, she's good. Um, she has a podcast called So Called Oreos, which is hilarious. And they make really good reels on Instagram. So she gives me reels tips. So they're going viral and learning from them. Um, and, yeah, you know, she writes for Isle Women amongst a bunch of other great, um, you know, publications for a bunch of lacrosse media as well. And, you know, I think – when my introduction to Mari really, or when we first really had a chance to sit down and talk and meet was um, when we recorded a podcast for IL Women, for my podcast shooting space, talking about being Black women in lacrosse in the sport. And, you know, I don't think I'd ever, you know, Alex and I had talked about our experiences with Black women in the game to some extent, but I think within the context of what was happening and then in the context of a podcast where I think Amari and I are both people that ask a lot of questions and want to talk in depth about everything. And we just kind of laid it all out there for like an hour and a half or however long it was. And 
it was so awesome to connect with someone who understands both the lacrosse perspective of being, you know, a lacrosse player and being a black woman and um, kind of all the different spaces that we have to occupy and try to stand out in and, and feel, you know, oppressed in and pushed down in, but also the joys of black womanhood and how regardless of, you know, whatever is happening, we're still coming out on top or following our passions, you know, hers is, is journalism, whether in sports or in other aspects, you know, lacrosse, mine is my business, it's lacrosse, it's traveling, it's all these things. And so, yeah, it's just a peer within the game that I respect so much. And um, I think she just is so stellar in everything she does. You can tell she's passionate about everything that she she does. So yeah, I just had to make sure I shout it out, you know, her, Alex, um, two people that I admire so much. And yeah, I just, I love them, they're great really covering all aspects of the game too, which is, you know, it's an awesome thing to see. Oh, yeah. Right. What does she tweet about lacrosse? Um, no, but yeah, yeah. Like you said, covers all aspects of the game and um, current events and, and yeah, just finds great ways to convey information and, and share her perspective in a really nuanced way. So always a pleasure to talk to her. In one sentence, how would you describe the lacrosse community on social media? Oh, one sentence. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I'll give you two sentences. Okay, yeah, that I might. Well, actually, I, I could. I think I could do one. Um, I would describe it as like an endless watch party. <laughs> we're all in the stadium. Six sentences later, we're all in a stadium together, a virtual stadium, continuously watching games, halftime, eating snacks, taking breaks, more games. So yeah, just endless watch party all the time. I, I think that might be the best description I've ever heard. So um, you knocked it out of the park. Well, Tari, we appreciate you coming on and giving your top five and sharing a little insight on each of them. So um, yeah, go give the top five a follow and uh, head to US Lacrosse Magazine for the rest of the story. Thanks again for joining us, Tari. Of course. Thank you for having me.